Hello viewers and welcome to IL-2 Sturmavik Battle of Stalingrad. I'm your host, PPG Chu, and well, today we're doing a follow-up video to our initial Let's Try back when this game was still in early access. And well, now this game is uh, it's a full release, it's version 1.003, so they've uh, even updated the game uh, following its full release. And uh, well, today we're just checking out uh, what new content they've added in general, what you're getting for uh, your buck when you purchase this off of Steam or I think 1C Publishing's as, uh, own virtual store. Um, just to recap some of the content from Early Access, you have a quick mission generator for the game in which uh, you can play on one of the three maps provided inside the game. These are a series of battles that you can customize. Um, so for example, you can start up a few ground attack missions, some um, 1v1 duels, or alternatively a uh, flight v flight type of battle there. And you can customize these with uh, date and time, what type of ground targets you want to go with, with in the event that you want to do a ground target mission and the realism settings for your battle there. Um, in addition to that, you also have uh, missions. So these are preset scenarios inside the early access portion of the game. I think there were only right around three or four of these. I remember us uh, checking out, say, like uh, ground attack missions here and the ghosts in the snow mission. But um, in the full release, they've added a whole bunch of these um, escort or just in general um, missions for you to accomplish in addition to a few training ones, such as like takeoff and landing and stuff like that. And of course, there's uh, there's a multiplayer portion to the game as well. And the multiplayer is quite lively. You actually have a, a, few, ser uh, a few servers that go up to, yeah, very large player counts, for example, 75 here. And as you can see, there's like 40, 40 people playing on that and it's uh, yeah it's quite a few single player mi or multiplayer missions as that but the main thing inside the full campaign or the more the the full release of the game is the uh, the campaign here the battle of stalingrad which is uh, divided up into five chapters here and how the campaign works is that it's uh, it plays off the uh, off of the game's ability to generate missions in the side that uh, in the sense that in this campaign you pick uh, which side you want to fly on so for example we'll go with the russians we pick what plane we want to use and uh, we can effectively generate um, a mission starting from whatever airfield you choose to uh, to start off in so uh, what this will do is that for example if I key in a mission from the Russian side and you can play this campaign on both of the sides we can do a ground attack mission these are of course dependent on what plane you choose and you can play these missions in uh, well two difficulty modes and a different duration and I'll tell you a little bit about what that does so what will happen is that when you generate a mission is that uh, the game will tell you just roughly where you're going and as you can see there's uh yeah, there's the frontage and all all set up, and they'll generate you a fairly realistic mission as to where you're supposed to do and uh, what you're supposed to do once you're there. Uh, following that, you can set up how you want your plane to work, what your uh, how you want your payload to be set up with. Um, so, for example, we can choose between a few different armaments. As you can see, uh, you do have to unlock these, and I'll talk a little bit about how you unlock them later on. But for now, um, we'll just go with say something like that. We'll use a general ammunition setup, and we'll just start the mission like that. Now, once you get through that portion of the game, it will yeah, it'll just load up what you have set up there. It'll give us a bit of a more detailed briefing for the mission, and uh, yeah, and then we go into the fight like that. Now, one of the big things about this is that it's uh, it's it's quite a robust generator. It does. Um, generates you your your uh, your background so your weather and your mission location of course and uh, one of the differences between the short duration for these missions and the long durations for these missions is that uh, you'll notice that the mission is uh, it's plotted in a series of waypoints if it was a long mission um, we would have to do these dashed line portions whereas inside the, the short mission duration we don't have to and those are of course just the landing and the uh, well the takeoff portions for that that mission. But either way, we'll just jump into the game and uh, attack a few artillery targets today. So let's begin. Alright, so uh, behind us we should have yeah, a whole flight of um, fighters going over here. And I guess the second flight behind us over there is, uh, is our escort and our flight of three here are the ground attack guys. Now, uh, one of the things I would probably want to do early on inside the mission is that, first and foremost, I'm going to disable auto level. And I'm going to see what they have here for the uh, the pitch trim and the roll trim, because I probably want to adjust those to something a bit better. And overall, ah, that time I actually got it 
done reasonably well. It usually takes a few tries to get the pitch and the roll trim of the planes adjusted nicely, but this time it looks like, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So now that we have all of those things done, we can speed up the time scale for the game, go to the objective, and effectively just uh, do whatever it wants us to do. And would you look at that, just absolutely wonderful terrain, those, uh, that fire effect, the, the black clouds and all that, those are all, um, those are all, I believe, fairly dynamic in the sense that the mission will, uh, will determine where those are, those aren't just stales, they just say things on the environment, those, um, those you can actually generate with a whole bunch of bombers if you choose to, so that's that. And now I guess we're just supposed to go right over there. Looks like the enemy is, uh, has a few of their fighters in there as well. And that gray thing right there is a, is a plane that we haven't identified, though um, it coming from the enemy's side, we can probably say that it's, uh, yeah, it's probably a BF-109 or something like that. Either way, it doesn't seem to have found seen us uh, so far, so I think it's just staying there. Either way, we have some artillery targets to destroy, so let's begin doing that. And again, um, with these different settings, you can make them as realistic as you'd like. So for example, I have a headset display with a map and a, uh, a dashboard with an airspeed, the altitude of a plane, and how, um, how much ammunition we have left. But you can change those, and you can use the instruments on the, uh, the actual cockpit if you'd like. Uh, let's see, these should be just stationary targets, so these shouldn't be that bad to hit. And I say that, and I know I'm probably going to miss the first few runs. Uh, let's see. So start off like that, just check out exactly how many placements there are. It looks like there's two, three guns. I'm using head track or track IR. So all of my head mo movements are uh, are used to control the in-game camera. And it's quite nice. And the other, thing, the other thing you can do with it is that it, uh, it actually does the positioning of your head. So if I like lean to the side, it'll actually model that in-game. Right, so we'll fly by it, drop our airspeed. Doesn't seem to be any guns over there, so we can go slow here. Do a bit of a turn. Get set up over here for another uh, run at that gun placement. And the other thing is that our allies should be... Uh, yeah, engaging that fighter right now, so they'll they'll do their jobs. Ooh, that's close, but I think yeah, I think we got it. Might be better to come in from the side there, so then they all line up. So let's go forwards here for a bit, and then we'll turn to our side and come back. Turn to the right and come back. So there we go. And that's another one gone. And we'll just go from another run for another run coming from here.
Yeah, one of the things that you guys may have noticed is that um, my controls are they're they're very unsensitive, so I have to try to do everything with fairly large uh, motions. And with that said, it's it's very difficult to uh, get the aim down at the very um, at the very ending portion. Um, for those who care, I'm using the uh, the the T flight. Hota's um, joystick, and it's, it's quite literally the cheapest um, hands-on throttle one that you can find in the uh, the Amazon store. And oddly enough, it works fairly well for um, for games like DCS World, but for this, it's uh, it's definitely considerably harder to play uh, with. I have I have the sensitivity in this game down to uh, like literally the minimum. Um, if you guys want, I could probably do a review comparing this to probably some some other joysticks out there but um, yeah once again it works very well for DCS world but not so much for this and I think we're down to just one more um, one more thing one more artillery battery down there so we'll finish that off and uh, afterwards we should be able to finish off the mission Now we should also be able to um, issue commands to the uh, to the other fighters here, because it would seem as though they're just following us right now. So uh, with that said, we might want to get them to um, to do something. So let's do uh, right, left, alt two. So attack nearest ground target, and we should be able to issue them uh, commands like that. There we go. And there we go. So that completes the task. And then we should be able to get our uh, flight to rejoin us soon enough. But it looks like they're busy handling a plane right over there. So I think we'll let them do that. And uh, as soon as they finish that guy off, we'll issue the command to regroup. And then we'll just go uh, right on back to base. And the thing is about these, uh, the thing is about these missions is that um, afterwards you get uh, you get experience permission that you do, and uh, well, follow our mission. Let's see, flight column formation or. Well, control nine. The thing about these missions is that um, as you do them, you gain you gain experience, which unlocks other stuff. And depending on, say, how many uh, targets you take out after you finish your mission here, you can you can opt to do say extra, which is uh, finishing off some of the the miscellaneous stuff present on the map. Now down there, that is actually one of our columns. So I don't know what they were firing at, but uh, nevertheless, that is that is there. 
and their formation should be coming back to us. So now, let's scale the mission and go home. Now I'm gonna try to get this portion done a bit faster than usual. So let's go down into a climb here, and because we don't have to land inside this mission variant, might as well drop that to just right around the very minimum and get a nice lovely view of uh, the city here. Oh, did down too much, but um, yeah, that's quite a nice view. And I'll see whether or not we can really push this. That is not good. That is actually... Oh, yikes. That is actually a full swarm of uh, enemy air targets. Looks like we'll have to engage those guys. So sorry, folks. I'm not too terribly familiar with these uh, flight leader orders, but it looks like attack nearest air target is left alt 1. So this will be a multi-part mission. This is the uh, the good thing about the mission generator is that, well, it, uh, it accounts for that. And let's see, so we have a few BF-109s, and we also have a few Stukas, so they have, uh, yeah, they're doing their own ground attack mission. Our flight is first, so we'll get our guys to just try their best in taking these guys out, and the people um, behind us will come in. So that'll be nice. They have a few dedicated ground um, ground attack planes, whereas our LA LAGs are more so... Um, more so fighters than, than ground attack planes, actually. So we should have a slight advantage over over their column overall. So let's see what we can do. Right now I just want to find one of their planes. So there. I want to go for one of the JUs and the Stukas because that would be probably the easier target out of the bunch. I think he was already smoking there, but we might have nicked him with the machine gun or something.
Well, at least our teammates are finishing it off. So at least that's that. Now that's uh, that guy left. Ooh. And he's going right for us. I think we might just have to go back to base because I cannot get that guy. Sorry, folks. But at least we can get a nice run through the, uh, the actual city of Stalingrad right here. And there we go. So now that we've arrived at the exit point, what we can do is uh, we can just finish the mission like such. And that will be that. So, um, what this will do is that it'll, yeah, it'll wrap things up, it'll give us our results here, so mission complete, and like I said, every mission you gain some experience, and along with uh, a few other things just like that. And overall, what will happen is that that will slightly um, change things up inside the campaign map here, and uh, yeah, the battle really just goes on like that. And after a while, of course, you unlock the next chapter inside the campaign, things just kind of go. So overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, well, follow-up to our first Let's Try of um, IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad here. And, uh, well, hope you guys stick around for more, perhaps, in the future. Bye-bye for now.